Hi everyone, October is fast approaching so it's time for us to do our monthly word art. So grab your paints and let's get started. So for our word art, um, I've drawn a horizontal line and I'm just going to now, with a compass, create a nice little hump. It's not a whole circle, so the key there is I actually found the central point of that line and then came down about an inch and a half and then filled in the curve, which just means that we get a lovely sort of like a mound rather than a rather than a semicircle. And I've got cobalt turquoise here, and I'm just going to fill this in nice and dilute. So I'm using a size eight brush, flat pointed round, which means I can get into those corners nicely, but it's large enough that if I work fast enough, I can get this filled in nice and evenly. Another great October flower is the Cosmos, an absolutely amazing petal flower. Here are two examples, again, grown by my very talented mother-in-law who keeps me in flowers. Uh, so thank you very much, Judy. Um, so we're going to paint some of these onto the little mound here. So I'm just gonna pop those to one side. Um, and essentially, we do have to be careful the pollen, the yellow pollen will uh, fall out of these flowers. Um, what I've done is I've just drawn in some lines. It was very important that the wash was quite nice and light so that our flowers have a chance of showing up over the top. Um, but there is probability that some of the petals, especially this first layer anyway, are going to be uh, a little bit turquoisey, but that's cool. So what I've done here is you can see a little oval where I have drawn in at the top of the stem, uh, that shows the central area of the flower. Um, if it's an oval, it means we can paint it sort of on an angle, but if it's a full circle, it means that we're looking at the flower like a full open face like that. Um, and then of course there'll be a few where we're just, we'll do a little curve like that and we're looking at them completely from the side onwards. So we're seeing the sepals underneath and just the petals from the side. I'm going to paint um, some petals with a mixture of cobalt violet and permanent rose. And I've got a size two brush here and I'm just gonna, just gonna go for it. So the amazing thing about Cosmos petals is they look like they were sort of destined to be painted in watercolour because they've got these wonderful kind of um, frilled edges as if a paint brush stroke has painted them. They're absolutely wonderful. So it means that we don't have to worry about neatening things up. I mean, you know, I don't tend to worry about that anyway. So as we come round the front, our petals are going to be just quite a lot shorter like that and that's just created a really nice sort of open angled flower now if we're going to do a completely open one we can just paint in more of an even distribution of petals with more equal lengths and as you can see, then they go onto the turquoise. They are becoming just a little bit colored in, but not too much. And it means we can just add another layer of interest to those. Um, some of you might find it helpful to draw like an outer circle as well. So you sort of get an even distribution, even length to petals. But I think I'm gonna kind of wing it. So with these um, autumn months for our word art, the, um, the word is a lot longer than May, June, July, 
April. So what I've been doing is I've been adapting the style of the painting to make it much more about the flowers and a little bit less about incorporating the word in so much because everyone loved the uh, September word art so much and we just had September just nice and small and arch so that's what we're doing here and now I'm going to paint in a side on flower so obviously it's very important that the wash has dried 100% before putting in these petals and I am just leaving a bit of space either side. Now I think I'm going to turn that one into a bud and turn that one into an open faced, not an open faced, a side on flower. So I'm just really like scribbling the brush to get these these petals with their funny edges. There we go. Lovely, so we just need those to dry. Um, but whilst they're drying, we can mix up some green for the pet uh, for the for the stems and the sepals. The sepals are very beautiful in themselves, actually. So sap green and green gold will mix up. Which gives us that lovely warm green tone that we see here. Now the other thing about Cosmos is this amazing um, spidery Le well, they're leaves, I guess they're leaves. But that's an absolutely amazing shape. So we're gonna add a load of those in to keep things nice and interesting. And that'll be a really good use of the rigger brush here. So make sure, try not to stick my hand in that one. So I'm gonna begin just by painting in the stems to start off with. And then we can add in some leaves. So to paint in these leaves, what I'm doing is I'm using the green gold sap green mix and I'm using the rigger brush and starting with a curly stem and then some branches off of that. And then off those, they have little branches too. It's a bit like painting a fern, the sort of repetition of a fern. And what I've done is one or two of them have just sort of come down and poked out over the bottom edge, which is quite nice. And I think I'll do one of those there as well. And then the other thing to do is the little buds. I've painted in one just up there. and uh, that's been drying. I've painted that in a very dilute green gold like I shall do for one just here. When I say green gold, I mean the sap green, green gold mix. And then we're gonna place some nice sepals over the top. So I need a slightly more concentrated mix. I'm adding a bit more sap green just so it really shows up and I think this two tenths brush will be fine. Um, they're pretty curly in themselves There we go. 
and then they tend to have a little branch coming off as well. So what's brilliant about these is you can use these to really shape the picture for yourself and then get it looking exactly how you want it. Now we, these petals are dry enough now that we can start to paint in some of the sepals on the flowers. Now they, they sort of come in two stages these sepals. We've got lighter ones first so I'm just going to use the green gold in a little bit of a diluted format first and paint in just like that. Even with this slightly stronger purple down here, it will still still work. And then we get a much more concentrated sap green, a bit like the sepals we were painting onto that bud there. And then we're going to do longer curlier ones, but I'm just going to let that dry a little bit longer. So in the meantime, we can look at the centres of the flowers. Now if I get some lovely cadmium yellow, this cadmium yellow is nice and opaque when it comes to watercolour paint. It's the more opaque pigment. The word cadmium in the title is the clue. And I'll take a size zero brush. So if you have a look here, there's lots and lots of little dots of yellow. So we'll, we'll use the pencil circle as the guide to sort of paint around. But in dotting the color, we sort of get that nice polony effect that we can then add a little bit more to later and then for on the side we just make sure that it's got a nice domed shape but then on the underside those petals are just in the foreground so they take precedence Okay, I think my pale sepals will be dry enough now, so I can paint in it all up There we go. And now I'm just going to add a few extra bits of sap green. I need to obviously fill those sepals up. Add a few little extras. And yeah, like I say, a little bit of sap green low lights here and there. Now these flowers are very very simple and they look rather nice as they are but what we can always do is add a few extra little streaks of color I'm just updating my water refreshing that 
just with a slightly more concentrated version of the colour. Whether you want to come from the top down like that or outwards. like that just adding in those little bits really do lift the petals it's very like the asters that we painted in the September word art but just nice and sort of expressive and fairly free but we're looking at using those nice sort of organic edges to the petals to help us along. And now for the word art bit of the word, the word of the word art. So what I did is I used that central line again to mark out five centimeters each way. October, the central letter is the O. So I put that in the middle and now I'm just writing my lettering very wobbly by hand and my hope is let's see it is four and four yeah that's pretty good okay and I quite liked the Payne's grey of last time um, yeah I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that again so use my big brush to just mix up some concentrated Payne's Grey. A lot of people do comment, my Payne's Grey is quite blue. It's Windsor and Newton professional quality Payne's Grey if anyone's intrigued. Anyway, uh, I've got a size, two tenths brush should be, should be all right. As a left hander, I'm gonna work my way backwards. I think we've probably all got a preference for which brush we'd feel we had the most control with. I'm not even sure it's the size two tenths, but it's not bad. But I do recommend, in fact, I really think you have to mark out your letters in pencil first, even if you then ignore them, like I just did with the central bit of that E there. but it's just really important to have that framework in there. I think that looks pretty cool. And then I can use the Payne's Gray then to just dot in uh, on the flowers themselves, because they do have a funny little bit of darkness in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a bit of yellow and I'm gonna add the tiny bit of Payne's Gray, a tiny bit more and a little bit of green. Just want to knock it back, make it slightly darker. There we go. And then I can use that as a sort of slightly shadowy underside. to just help that show up a bit more. Right, so we just let everything dry, rub out the pencil, and that will be our October word art. And there is your October floral word art featuring a wonderful seasonal flower, the cosmos. 
Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And if you're sharing your work on social media, then tag us at De Winton Paper Co on Instagram. And if you never want to miss another video, then make sure you're subscribed by hitting the subscribe button and the little notification bell just next to it. Okay, until next time, bye!